tonight on the South Today. A Dunedin woman is charged with murder after a sudden death is discovered at a Tainui property. It's a new era for two Gore schools as they prepare to merge later this year with a cultural new name. And tap water from around the country goes under the microscope at a taste testing competition in Dunedin. Kia ora, good evening. I'm Hannah Wilkins. A 60-year-old woman has been charged with murder following a sudden death at a Dunedin property last night. Police were called to the Tainui Road home at around 5.20 yesterday evening where a man was found dead at the address. A 60-year-old woman was taken into custody at the scene where later she was charged with murder. Police reassure they are not seeking for anyone else involved in the crime but will be increasing their presence in the area as the investigation continues. A neighbour said he saw a woman in Ugg boots being led away by police believing the older couple had only moved into the house at the start of the year. Officers were originally armed with rifles when they first attended the scene. Another witness said they saw officers searching a house near the intersection at Magdala Street without any lights or sirens on. The woman appeared in Dunedin District Court on Friday morning where no plea was entered and there was no request for bail. The names of both the defendant and the deceased have been suppressed with the case set to come before the High Court again next month. In Dunedin, the South Today. A crash involving three cars between Dunedin and Molesgill yesterday has left one person with serious injuries. Emergency services responded to a crash involving multiple cars on Three Mile Hill Road between Silverstream Valley and Halfway Bush Roads at around 4.15 yesterday evening. One person was left seriously injured, while two other people had moderate injuries. No one was trapped during the incident, but fire crews from Roslyn and Willowbank stations assisted at the scene. Two Gore District schools are preparing to merge by the end of the year, but the new name was revealed this week. The two institutions will combine to become Maruawai College, paying tribute to the rich heritage of the Matoda River Valley. A strong haka to celebrate local history and culture. Longford Intermediate and Gore High School are set to merge at the end of this year to become Marwawai College. That means Valley of Water in Māori, with the name gifted by Kaitahu, reflecting the deep connection to the land and waterways in the region. It encapsulates all the communities that come in and sort of source Gore, Gore High School, or now known as Marwawai. So it's a, yeah, an inclusive name for for the wider community as well, not just those who reside here in Gore. The development was announced to around 300 guests on Wednesday night, including staff, parents and the community. And pupils from the two schools are thrilled about the new name and its meaning. I'm pretty excited to have a new name. I think it's, you know, it's been a hundred years of traditions and to change the name is pretty exciting. Um, I think it's a great opportunity to add our Māori language into our culture a wee bit more um, and the culture of Southland. So I, I really love the new name. The merged college will initially operate from the two existing sites. However, the Gore High School site will be redeveloped to accommodate the extra pupils, with work starting in early 2024. In Gore, the South Today. A Dunedin Suicide Prevention Trust ran its annual street appeal today as they desperately seek funds for mental health support. Life Matters Suicide Prevention Trust has been operating in Dunedin since 2014, providing peer support to people seeking help for their mental health. Staff say the number of people needing their support have grown over the years and are concerned more are falling through the cracks in the mental health system. Volunteers were scattered across the city today, asking for donations from the public to help fund their services. Usually there's a fantastic um, response from the community and we've got great collectors out there uh, today so I, you know, I'm hoping people will give generously. The trust is entirely funded through community donations so rely heavily on the money raised from the appeal day. But they also hope it will spread more awareness of the support needed to help those struggling with their mental health. In Dunedin, the South Today. The country's drinking water has been in the spotlight in Dunedin as judges, including a professional wine taster, sampled clear drops from around the country. It was part of an annual conference for the water industry featuring competitions and new technologies. 
a look, a whiff and a taste as judges assess the finest tap water from across the country. The competition's one of the highlights of this year's Water Industry Operations Group Conference, being held at Dunedin's Town Hall. Drinking water from 20 council supplies was entered in the tap water taste test. They were narrowed down to four finalists, Palmerston North, Waimati, Tauranga's Western Bay and two-time winner Timaru District Council. The samples were judged on four categories, clarity, colour, odour and taste, with Otago Daily Times wine reviewer Mark Henderson getting to use his specialist skills. The clarity in, you know, was similar in all of them really, but it was that, probably for me, partly that mouthfeel, the sweetness, a little bit of, yeah, they, they were very subtly different. Meanwhile, outside, reticulation operators were competing against the clock, completing a simulated pipe installation in the National Live Tapping Competition. Water industry representatives from across the country getting the chance to discuss problems and solutions and check out new water filtering and processing technologies. It's about um, raising awareness um, about the great job that the water industry um, operators from around the country do to deliver um, quality, uh, compliant drinking water 24-7. And leading the way in that area is the Waimati District Council, which took out the top prize this year for New Zealand's best tasting tap water in Dunedin, the South Today. FI Yakane, still to come on the South Today. The Otago Nuggets winning streak may be over, but an overseas coach still has their eye on star players. And the Wizard of New Zealand gets set to make their acting debut. Snap up a deal this weekend. My mate John's taken 50% off selected furniture and beds, plus 20% off everything else. Only at John's Furniture Warehouse. My mate John. Drive away your way with three incredible offers on the Honda CRV Adventure Ready Range. Choose from 2.9% finance with zero deposit, third, third, third finance or lease a new CRV from just $136 per week. These offers are only available for a limited time, so be in quick. From Honda. Aero, used by Australia's top bowlers with their unique Z-Scoop grip that redefines the game. Machined with robotics for unparalleled accuracy, Aero, same line, every time. risk of developing melanoma skin cancer, you owe it to yourself to have a mole map. Mole map is coming to your area. Phone today to make an appointment. It could save your life. Here at Age Concern Otago, we offer a range of services to support Otago seniors to age well with dignity and independence. We provide social work support, visiting service, health promotion and social activities. Check out what we have on offer at ageconcernotago.com. Welcome back. The Otago Nuggets had a hawk-eyed spectator watching over their game against the Auckland Tuatara last night. The Perth Wildcats coach is on the prowl, scouting out the competition on the other side of the Tasman Sea. You'd think a six foot five man on a basketball court had come to play, but this coach is here to talk business. The Otago Nuggets and Perth Wildcats basketball teams have a unique relationship. 
both sharing the same owner and even some of the same players. Perth Wildcats coach John Rilly has made the trip across the ditch to check out some of the local talent. You're always on the job, always looking uh, at players and prospects. Um, but when you're on these type of trips, you actually get to see people outside of basketball as well. So that's a big part of uh, our franchise as well. One of these players is 25-year-old American Ja'Cory McLaughlin, who plays point guard for the Nuggets. Really has known McLaughlin for over a decade and sent him to the Nuggets to get more experience. The Wildcats coach made his way down south looking for potential players to fill the remaining spot left open in his roster for next season. You're looking for a good player that can bring something to our, to our team. Uh, you know, someone that can make some shots uh, is always a good thing in this sport. He says New Zealand has become a big player in the Australian National Basketball League market. The two teams continue to benefit from their relationship, giving players from both sides of the ditch an opportunity to develop their game. In Dunedin, the South Today. The personality known as the Wizard of New Zealand has made his acting debut in a movie which is due to premiere in London next month. Five Kingdoms, The Forest is a gritty New Zealand's period drama set in 1901 and will be screened at independent cinemas across the country. Christchurch filmmaker Sam Miller is flying high. He's about to head off to London to attend the world premiere of the first movie in a cinematic trilogy, Five Kingdoms, The Forest. Miller wrote, produced and directed the period drama, which was filmed in Canterbury and the Chatham Islands. About a, a monk who uh, goes to a town in 1901 and he has to stay in the, in the, in the forest at a, um, a little um, like a hermitage for a, a year and he falls afoul with the local villagers. The self-proclaimed Wizard of New Zealand is one of 40 cast members in the film and plays the role of an innkeeper. Enjoy! Enjoy! Savor! Savor! and he admits he was easily convinced to join the project. For years I've run film festivals, I've run cinemas, when my, and I used to lecture on, on cinema as an art form in the 1960s, so I'm a real pioneer. I also formed a silent film society in Western Australia, so I'm very much love cinema. And not just that, but also I happen to get on well with Sam here, who's a bit of an oddball himself, and we have, we have a similar view of things, we love fun. But the New Zealand Project is a movie trilogy with a difference. Miller says the story builds as it goes along, with none of the cast members yet knowing how their characters will meet their end. I've been involved for about three he's, years. He's still he's still, he's still don't know what he's, 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 he's up to. He's, well, he's good fun, so we join in. It's a work <laughs> in progress. That's right. Yeah, work yeah. In progress. It's art the experience, not art the object. <laughs> Nationwide screenings across New Zealand are due to start later next month, with audience members even being invited to go along in costume. In Christchurch, the South Today. And now recapping tonight's top stories on the South Today. A 60-year-old Dunedin woman has been granted name suppression this morning after being charged with murder. Longford Intermediate and Gore High School will merge at the end of this year to become Marua Wai College. And a water competition made a splash in Dunedin with Waimate District Council winning Best Tasting Tap Water. And now we'll look at what's happening in tomorrow's ODT and we welcome Associate Editor Mike Houlihan. Hello Mike. Good evening, Hannah. What can we expect in the weekend paper? Well, we're also looking at that mur alleged murder in Tainui, um, looking in into the circumstances of both the accused and the victim, um, as much as we can obviously given the nature of, uh, of the orders that the court made today. Yes. Um, speaking of court, we've also been catching up with a case of a woman from Lawrence who has wrecked up in a... Yeah, I mean, nothing's funny about drink driving, but it's a, mm -hmm. some of the circumstances are quite hilarious about how she managed to find herself in front of the courts again for this dreadful crime. Oh goodness, okay. Um, we also, on a lighter note, have an interview with a woman who uh, was about to become the first female in 138 years to referee a, a top flight club rugby game in Auckland, Dunedin. Oh stunning, okay. Yeah. Uh, we've also got, obviously, on it being a Saturday, a big section of sport, uh, previewing the steel and... Uh, and the Highlanders, uh, and mm -hmm. the Mix Feature Magazine with all plenty of good reading for the weekend there. Brilliant. Well, thank you for sharing this evening, and we look forward to reading, Mike. Thank you. And time now for a look at the weekend weather. The South Today weather, proudly brought to you by Mallmap, the skin cancer detection specialists. 
Looking at the situation, expect widespread showers and cold gusty southwest winds tomorrow that will then ease on Sunday. Heading to the top of the South Island, gusty winds right through here tomorrow with showers at times. The day's high will be 14 in Nelson, 13 over in Greymouth and up to just 11 in Christchurch. Travelling to South Canterbury and North Otago, fresh south westerlies and showers with highs of 11 degrees in Ashburton, Temeru and Awamaru tomorrow. Heading westwards to the central lakes, wet and windy through here tomorrow too with gusty south easterlies and showers up to 9 in both Wanaka and Queenstown while Alexandra reaches a high of 11 degrees. Heading further south, another cool day through here tomorrow. Expect gusty south easterlies and showers clearing with top temperatures of 9 in Gore and Balclutha and 10 degrees down in the Catlins. And down through the deep south, rain easing to showers tonight with cold south easterlies and a low of 10. Tomorrow's looking overcast with showers and strong winds and a high of 11. Then Sunday starts with showers before a sunny yet cool and windy afternoon with 13 degrees. And finally heading to Dunedin. Showers and south westerlies with a low of 9 in town tonight. Saturday's looking overcast with light rain, strong winds and a high of 11. Then Sunday brings early showers before a sunny and windy afternoon with 12 degrees. And that's the news this Friday. For the latest news and videos from the southern region, head online to odt.co.nz. You can follow Channel 39 on YouTube to catch our news bulletins on demand. And you can also now follow us on Facebook. Just search for The South Today NZ to see our favourite sto <laughs> favorite stories from around the regions. But look, coming up after the break is this week's edition of Global Insight, where Professor Robert Patman discusses a newly elected party in Thailand taking power away from the monarchy. We'll see you again next week. Matewa. Public interest journalism funded through New Zealand on air.